For business leader Gerald Sprinkle, service toward others is paramount. Doing it in the name of Jesus Christ is why he serves. And I am so glad that Gerald is taking time to be with us on 100 Hunter Street. It's good to see you. It's great to be here. You know, we had some time in an earlier segment to talk about your spiritual formation mm -hmm. and how you came to know the Lord and how you have been serving Him so faithfully through these years. Mm -hmm. I thought in this segment it would be wonderful to talk about. Yes, it's great that the Lord has given you success in business mm -hmm. and blessed you, and we celebrate that. Mm -hmm. But you have taken a, a page out of Bob Buford's book, Halftime, where he mm. talks about moving from success to significance in your yeah. life. Mm. And you have done that in a number of ways. And there are two mm. I want to talk about. One, I want to talk about the Lionheart School. Mm. That is a school that you and your wife and some other families in Atlanta founded for special needs kids, mm. really inspired out of Hampton being yeah, born yeah. into your family with special mm. needs as your son. And the other is what you're doing right now strategically in the city of Atlanta mm. to minister and care for the poorest, as Jesus would call it, the least mm. of these. Yeah. So let me stop with the question. Tell us about the formation of what has become this wonderful school in Atlanta, the Lionheart School. Mm. Yeah, to be honest with you, John, it just, um, was kind of started for selfish reasons. You know, we, uh, my son, we got to the point, Hampton, we got to the point um, where he was entering kindergarten. And um, the school we went to, we said that he's going to need this, and he's going to need that, because um, he also has medical issues. And they said that's going to be difficult for us to do. We'll probably have to take him from one place to another during the course of a day. And we, we knew that probably wouldn't be good to him. So, so we transporting actually, him would be awkward. Oh, uh, it would be very difficult. Very stressful for him. Yeah, very difficult. So, um, yeah, we found some other parents with a, with a common need and a wonderful teacher, right, Elizabeth. And so was our friend Elizabeth Dewey, yeah. been on, who's been on 100 yeah. Street. Yeah. So it was kind of formed out of necessity for us. Yeah. yeah. So that just doesn't happen though, Carol. <laughs> I mean, it may have been yeah. formed out of self and such necessity, but there was a vision and what, what happened? Were there other people that had a similar vision? Th there was, John. It was interesting. Um, you know, we, this all happened like three weeks before school was to start. You're kidding. Yeah. And there was a um, church that offered a little cottage that we could start out um, the school there. And at that point, I think we had nine kids that wanted to come, seven or eight, nine. I can't remember, remember it back then. But anyway, they offered this cottage. And uh, I told some friends of mine, and the next thing, you know, we have heat and air and people painting and everything else. I'm talking about just actually a couple weeks before school was to start. How many years ago yeah. now? I don't want to stop. Fourteen. Before. Fourteen. Okay, so fourteen, 14 years ago this starts yeah. in a little church cottage. Yeah. And you have seven or eight kids that have special needs that right. are going to show up. You've got to have a faculty, I guess. Well, Elizabeth was basically our, our faculty. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, she was tired when she went I home. Bet, I, yeah. Every day I bet she, she was. She was exhausted that. when she went home. So yeah. let's kind of fast forward and talk about where it is today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've had an opportunity. You guys have asked me to serve on, mm -hmm. a, you know, advisory kind of thing. And that was fun. Uh, we've, we've, we've talked about Lionheart here on Huntley Street. What? Where is it today and where do you see it heading in the future? You know, John, we are uh, right at over 40 kids and uh, we moved into a new building, I think it was four and a half, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we always wanted to be very careful when you grow a school for special needs children because the teachers are as, more, more, as much as important as the children. Um, so, you know, it's maybe two kids or three kids to one teacher. So it's a, it's a slow grow. Yeah. Um, thing for sure. And uh, did you, did you uh, over time begin to find that faculty and find those people? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, God sent them to us. It's funny how that all happens. You know, we got some great stories. We got a wonderful staff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. your wife, Heidi, deeply involved in this. On the board now. That's right. Yeah. And I should do a shout out to, <laughs> to, so to, should I. So to, to our friend Heidi. Yeah. And uh, it's really become a big part of your life. It is. It has. So uh, with Hampton now, uh, does he stay in that school? He's, John, he's, how old is he now? Man, Hampton turned 21, and we started the really neat thing this year. We kind of called it Lionheart for Life, but um, we have nine, I think, nine kids. And what they do, they find things that they like or are attracted to outside of school, and they work there, right? Okay. And unbelievable, Hampton is phenomenal with elderly and loves them. And so he works at Dogwood Forest of Assisted Living Community. Really? Yeah. One day a week. And he works at the YMCA one day a week. And then he works at a church one day a week, getting their chapel ready for the service on 
on this Sunday. So he's found his way. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and one of the things you have to be encouraged, we've had guests on our program, is how corporate uh, America, corporate Canada, has really gotten behind hiring uh, folks and with they, disabilities yeah. and putting them in wonderful roles. Yeah, it's interesting. It, it, you know, when, when, when kids go into places like that, you know, they think that they're going in there, but what happens is the people that are there end up being the ones that are blessed. Yeah. yeah and Hampton's formed some really neat relationships with some, with some people. There's something else that happened to you. I've, I've, I've known you now a good long time. And when I first met you, uh, you had a heart for all people, mm. and you had a heart for and care for 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 um, those that were struggling with financially or maybe were on on the streets, uh, the poor. Yeah. Something's gone to a new level with you now. Mm. Uh, talk to us about what you're doing to care for poor people mm. in the Atlanta yeah. area. Yeah. Um, not to promote myself by any means, but you know it's interesting, John, that. A lot of us want to serve, but we just don't feel that we could be impactful in any way to any any shape, yeah. form. Were you there? Or were I, you... I felt the same way. I said, you know, I had money to give, you know, but as far as something that I could spend my time, my talents on, and unfortunately it took me a long time to find what my spiritual gift was, yeah. you know. And, but it has. It's, it's, it's um, the Atlanta mission downtown that not only do we serve homeless guys that come in from the street, uh, a safe place to sleep and food and a shower, but we also have recovery programs there that guys can stay there as long as uh, three months to six months to a year, all the way into a job obtainment program, a career development program. Um, just a little background. I know that you have, you and Heidi both have big hearts and you've opened up your home for people and all kinds of stories and situations there that we've walked with in friendship through the years. You've always had a big heart, and did did you did you sense that with Atlanta Mission, this was like a, a new level of inspiration? Yeah. Was this was not just giving, but tactically being more hands-on? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It all started with me. I, we uh, my company sponsored a hospitality one night. John, I went to get in my car, and on the other side of a fence, I saw this box moving. And I got out of my car, and I said, "Is anybody in there?" And this guy walks out. I said, "What are you doing?" He goes, "This is where I live." I go, "What?" And I said, what's your name? And he goes, my name's Leroy Simon. And I said, wow, Leroy. And I think I gave him $20 to make myself feel good. And I got back in my car and I got back out and um, I said, Leroy, I got to ask you something. And he said, yeah. I said, um, do you know God? And he looked at me and he goes, I love God, but I have no idea why he loves me so much. And for some reason that oh. just so attracted me that he just became oh. a person. You know, it wasn't a guy living in a box. So Leroy God and I... in a box who couldn't figure out why God loved him so much. You know, you know, amazing. And we loved on Leroy, John, and it's interesting because, you know, the first thing, I couldn't wait to get back down there, and I was putting a care package together for him, and, of course, what I did, I had, like, a candle and things like that, and Heidi goes, my wife goes, now, listen, he lives in a box, and you're giving him a candle and matches. He said, maybe a flashlight might be better. So my uh, education with helping the guys on the street was... Another level? It was, yeah. So yeah, what are you involved with now there? Yeah. Because you, 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 you are... Yeah. What I... I, I've talked about you. You, uh, I, there's a time maybe you still do it, but I remember you used to go to jails and yeah. lead Bible studies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you just get out there and do it. Yeah. You, you're not afraid to get your hands dirty. What, well, what's the last going on? year, what's yeah, with, with the life? last year is um, I've been really concentrating on the career development program at the Atlanta Mission. I know that sounds funny, but you know, mm -hmm. really, if you want to end homelessness, you, you, you got to get them a job, yeah. right? So at it's the end a of the cycle. It's, yeah, it's a and it's a Christ. Um, centered program that we teach these guys everything from soft skills learning to hard skills and why jobs important and so forth and god john we've got, I got guys working for family for friends for relatives all over the city of atlanta and it's interesting they all the, the majority of the time saying these guys are great employees so you help get employment going for these guys. yeah it's a it's a complete career development program that they're in for 11 weeks uh, oh, I guess it's been almost two years ago that uh, mm. the same crew that's with me now, we went out to uh, out beyond Douglasville and uh, met the Lehman Luther people. I know Brian the very well. You know Brian and the mm. furniture folks. Yeah. And it's a similar situation there. They just found homeless guys living in the woods and they found out they were craftsmen. Yeah. And they began to help them and now they're creating jobs and uh, have a nice little thriving business going. Yeah. And helping. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. So what do you say to the guy who's kind of right now all wrapped up in, because mm. we got a lot of folks that watch this program and they'll yeah. sometimes watch it late at night. 
Yeah. And it might be with a nightcap, and they're yeah. just maybe there laughing at us or yeah. whatever. But somehow, <laughs> some way, somehow, yeah. some way, life ain't working out, and they're yeah. pretty selfishly consumed. You would encourage them to start oh, turn John. their turn their eyes toward other people. Care. Yeah. You know the crazy thing is, you think you're going to go down and bless somebody, you know, and do something for somebody, and you walk out of there going, "Wow, was I blessed?" You know, I think that's the way God made it. Yeah. And, and um, I don't care what your skill set is, what you do in life, you can find a, a place and where to serve. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of ministries, because we're talking about Atlanta City Mission, but you know, in Toronto, there's Toronto City Mission, mm. all across cities in Canada, the United States, wherever you may be watching this, there are missions yeah. that are Christ-centered that want to help, just as Gerald is doing in Atlanta. Why not just go online and find out a way that mm. you could get involved? And uh, place the emphasis on others and watch what begins to happen. Uh, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. And mm. it's what, Gerald, you experienced. Mm. You gave and you had no idea what you get in return. Yeah. You know, our, our Tuesday mornings are Bible study group. And, you know, I always tell people I've been changed by Tuesdays. You know, yeah. it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. Gerald, Gerald, we are so grateful. Um, thanks for your life and for mm. your friendship. And... Uh, Continued blessing, uh, you know, we'd say continued success. How about this? Continued significance. Mm, I love it. Pray yeah. that you will. Yeah. Let me pray for you that are watching today that may be where Gerald is in his life. Father, for those that may be watching today who have, who are an exceptionally gifted person and maybe they've had the ability to do well in business and finance and they have, they've been able to accumulate some things, but still are finding that they're not satisfied that they're not sensing significance in their lives. I pray that they would reach out and find a ministry near them and engage them and make a difference by rolling up their sleeves and getting involved beyond writing the check, mm. that they would dedicate a portion of their time to reach the, the least of these, the hurting, the poor, those that are oppressed, those that have been victims, those that have been victims of crime and, and those that have been harmed. Mm. I pray, Father, that you would give us a fresh, just a fresh burden for those that are living from not just day to day, but moment to moment. Mm. May we not just walk by them and be cold and inconsiderate and make a judgment about them, but may we have compassion upon them. May we see them with the eyes of Jesus. Mm. Continue to have your hand upon Gerald. Bless him, Father, he and Heidi, and all that they are doing. We pray that you would just strengthen them and thank you for their family. We ask, Father, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gerald, thanks so much, man. Oh, thank you. You're so good at that. Oh, well, man. man. We're just, you we're are. grateful.